out there. Sorry for the time delay. We had a little bit of technical difficulties within the first few minutes. I'm Brittany. And Jordan. With and Figaro. And paparazzi. Here we are. Yeah. In Cannabis Cultures Lounge in Vancouver, BC. I see some blue sky. Yeah. Partially sunny day. <laughs> always cloudy a little bit. A little. There's always clouds. But we stay positive. So we have a special segment to show you guys this week. Um, Jay Rowe in the kitchen. <laughs> and also some live footage from their show. Um, they were in Whistler at Garfinkel's. They were also in Vancouver at Bar None. We saw them both times. They were awesome. Great performers. Thanks. That's okay. Okay. Um, so I think we're going to go right to Jay Rowe's kitchen, Jeremiah. May I just say that Jay Rowe was doing this, and I was like, you want to know what? We have a cooking segment on our show, so I'm going to film you and stock it all and make sure it's on there. Yeah, it was awesome. So cannabis tea. Here we go. So what's in there? Oh, some very high grade uh, British Columbia. Rick Rubin. Do you say that like British Columbia? Yeah, uh, BC Bud is what we refer, refer to it as. Trying to be a little more Canadian. A. A. <laughs> and you just have two tea bags and yeah, some buds we're there. Let, we're gonna let that simmer a little bit. You know what I mean? Oh, you can see the buds going on. And it tastes delicious. Tastes delicious. Awesome. Bro, you ain't got to put sugar in there. Man. It's sweet. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. I always remember to clean up after itself. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back hope you guys enjoyed that it was pretty funny excellent tea too actually jeremiah uh, me and ryan all tried the tea and it i did not participate tasted delicious like it tasted like tea it did not taste like cannabis i will sit that out i did not partake <laughs> in that she says. uh we have david nama levine that's gonna come on and talk about uh an art auction hold on david come on in you can just squeeze in my chair i will squeeze in your chair Hi, David. Hello. The paparazzis. Yeah. Hello, puppy. The puppy parazzi. The paparazzi. <laughs> the paparazzi. Yes, and here we have the uh, beautiful image uh, poster for the art auction tonight. I don't know if you can see that. Ta-da. Yes, we have uh, uh, postcards and prints of that for sale in various sizes, uh, along with all sorts of other fantastic art pieces available at crazy crazy prices this is the grand opening of the the uh herb museum eight years in the making wow. so, I said crazy, days herb museum. crazy days herb museum you want to talk deals to talk deals want to buy art we got art you want to eat olives don't come down to crazy herb too hard no yell in the mic <laughs> okay all right i'm a little rambunctious but disregardless please come check out the herb museum uh, we're open daily, uh, three to nine, and uh, the first two re the first two rooms are free, and the other two rooms are five bucks for an hour. But you get a va volcano vaporizer, so you can vape and learn. Awesome. And yeah, and come to the art auction tonight, and you'll you'll see some a lot of really cool art. Okay, so cool. thanks thanks for it starts at seven and it goes till ten. So check it out. And you can see uh, a preview of some of the art available uh, on the homepage at Cannabis Culture. Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> so, in other news, this week, our boy Wiz Khalifa got into some trouble. Yeah, he did. Um, the hip hop star, Snoop Dogg's protege, actually recently op uploaded a picture to Instagram with him in weed, which. For Wiz Khalifa, it's not anything new for him to upload weed. 
Not at all. He uploads blunts. He uploads him smoking blunts. All of his photo shoots, he's smoking 99% of the time. This one was a little different, though, because it was uploaded in Texas. And we all know that the United States is okay in most places, but down south, Texas area, Mississippi, Louisiana, all those places, very, very strict on marijuana. So a couple hours later, after this photo was uploaded, our, our boy Wiz got a knock on the door by the local... Texan police. I believe he was in Nashville, which is like the music hub of Texas. Um, cops knocked on his door, gave him a citation. I'm not sure if he was federally charged. I'm 90% positive it was just a citation. Took his stash and said that it was stinking up the hotel and neighbors smelt it, which is really, there's a lot of controversy going on right now, whether or not it was the Instagram picture or it was smelling. Also, um, to the story last week I had about Rihanna rolling the blunt oh, yeah. on, oh, yeah, on that her was bodyguard. Like crazy. There was actually a lot of backlash she got for that. There was people coming from all neck of the woods saying, you are the worst role model for my daughter and you should not be in the position you're in. But somebody doesn't choose to be a role model, I don't think. I think, like, out of... Well, if you're in the public eye, you're someone's going to look up to you probably. Right. But then you have celebrities like Britney Spears who are like, oh, I'm a virgin, until she was 21 years old. Rihanna never played like that. Like, she didn't no, care. No, she never She always nice. openly smoked in public. Like, you know what you're getting into. Watch any of her music videos, and you understand. She's not trying to be a role model. She's trying to be... Well, maybe for a different kind of girl, not yeah. a... Yeah. My role maybe. model. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, MTV actually tweeted her and said... I love this. Yeah, at Rihanna, which we'll tweet directly to her, is getting a lot of controversy for her Coachella photos. And then Rihanna tweeted back to MTV, I have only so many fucks to give. No, I ran out. At I, Rihanna um, ran out of fucks to give. Yeah, <laughs> as in she does not give a fuck because all of her fucks are already gone. That's so funny. It's so um, hilarious. I think Nashville is in Tennessee. No, Nashville, Texas. Where all the it's, it's Tennessee, really? Okay, well, he was in Texas. What's the big one in there's Texas? Dallas. Dallas. There's, there's a Nashville in Texas. That's oh, there is. That's okay. where Taylor Swift. That's where Taylor Taylor Swift's from. All the big oh, country people come from Nashville. There's Nashville, Tennessee as well. Okay. But Nashville, Texas is definitely bigger than Nashville, Tennessee. When people think Nashville, they think Texas. Tex I don't know. I think I Tennessee. Know really? We should check the populations <laughs> to see which one's bigger. Right. Just let's curiosity. get the numbers. Jer yeah. That's what Jeremiah I, is. I he's vote our, Tennessee. He's our handy dandy Googler. What do you guys think of up there? Nashville, Texas, or Nashville, Tennessee? Tennessee, totally. Really? Yeah. I totally think Texas. But that's also, I know that it's the music hub, so right away, Nashville, Texas. So is Nashville, Tennessee. Well, yeah. that's where Elvis and everybody came from, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, country, Nashville, Texas. <laughs> Whatever Elvis's genre is, that's where Tennessee yeah, comes what did, from. I don't know, Chess. He's like an old school R and B almost, because Elvis was half black. I don't know. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, he's in. He's like the original R and B old school jammer. Well, it was kind of like I don't know. Anyway, blues, soul, <laughs> blues, yeah. something old, awesome. All right. Um, we also did an interview with Sweatshop Union uh, last week when they were at Bar None in Vancouver. So we have their interview. They had a really good show. I really liked um, them. They were really smart guys, and they were really chill. Had a good time with them. Yep, they were really relaxed, for sure. Yeah, nice. we'll have them on the show again. They're local. They're from Vancouver, so hopefully whenever they have some time, they can drop by, maybe do a live show. Yep. So let's see the video of the interview for Sweatshop Union. Yeah, we were talking about uh, 
how in the states, you know, it's more liberal. But yeah, he he nailed it when he said it's all in the state you're in because we spent a lot of time in Denver and stuff, and it seems to be pretty liberal there. Colorado. But, and yeah, and I lived in California for three years, and there it's all good. But the whole thing is federally, it's still legal, obviously. So As the, in anywhere in the United States. Yeah, so it's like any federal agent, even in California, can arrest you and bust you. It's like uh, so it's, the, like, yeah. it's like in Canada with the RCMP. Right, they're federal police, yeah, as the Vancouver police are more. Yeah, they might, they're, they're might be more likely to. Take I really, the, I think it's a fear thing because in Canada, especially Vancouver, I've never even been afraid of, unless I was, you know, I had a bunch to sell or something like that. I mean, that's a different fear, but as a consumer and user of it, like I didn't give a shit. I would roll it up and walk down the street, barely get a dirty look. Whereas down there, it's like I wouldn't really. I, no. I'm always sketchy and fucking like. And I mean, obviously, you guys, you know, you're doing this thing. It, you guys know it's it's a preposterous tragedy. That it's it's a, it's a plant that grows out of the ground. Yeah, just like and coffee. And it has many medicinal uses that are actually proven beyond the shadow of a doubt by this time. Beyond the shadow of a doubt by this time. And they're still trying to say that somehow it has to have any sort of legal status. Yeah. Like I'm not even saying decriminalize it or make it legal. Just treat it like any other plant. Yeah. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah. But of course, you know. Yeah, it's all control with money and things like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's very political. Yeah, super. And uh, I noticed you it's guys It's a commodity, actually... right? So it's like with anything, it's business. Yeah, well, it's a multi-billion dollar yeah. industry in this province alone. So I know, you, I know you guys talk a lot about politics and your music. We don't really anymore. Your older stuff. But I would say we, we, we would, um, even then, I think we people would say that about us, but I think it's more that we were just conscious of things, just like everyone's conscious of things, but we just expressed them in a certain way. And if that's political, that's political. But I don't think we meant to be, you know, when you say politics, you know, it's like you think of guys on a podium and, they're, and yeah. you don't trust them. That's not what we're about at all. It's, uh, you know, but we were talking more about the politics of everyday living and all this kind of stuff yeah. back then. But I feel like we've achieved a certain state now where it's like, you know, it's, it's more about personal magic. It's not about politics, it's about how yeah. you make it work for you. Everybody has their own form of politics, I believe. The government politics are actually very corrupt, and they ask us to follow this certain thing, but everyday life is politics. It's politics to go out and like walk your dog and go to the store and whatever. There's um, always something going on. Yeah. Do you fine. guys follow politics, government politics? A little bit. Have you guys heard about Phil C-10? Yeah, that's horrendous. What do you think? Uh, I think it, it, I wasn't shocked that they were trying to do it. That is sad. Are you shocked it passed? Uh, yeah. No, I wasn't even shocked that it passed because this government, this Harper government right now is following suit exactly up to the American uh, imperialist agenda. Um, and that's not to say that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what they're doing. You know what I mean? Um, and I wasn't surprised. I mean, we have, you know, the Patriot Act that they signed in the States, we also have a Canadian version of that. Yeah. So, of course, every other uh, draconian law that they have in the States, we're going to have our own baby version of that. And... Uh, I think I'm not surprised by it, but it's definitely making it clear that we're in those times. Yeah. yeah. We are a baby of the states, right? But we're in those times. These are the times where people are going to openly bully you yeah. as a people, yes. and you're going to have to figure out what to do about it. Um, and I always advocate a peaceful solution to that, and that, that would be, you know, awesome. But it's going to happen one way or another. You can't force people too long with something that doesn't make any goddamn sense. Nope. Sure. Everyone knows it too. I noticed also in some of your music you don't really have a lot of reference to marijuana. But word on the street yeah. is a lot of the guys in the band do use. Uh, is there a reason for use. there not being an influence? I think marijuana. personally to me it's like, it's not even a conscious decision. It's not something that I like, it's, it's I don't also don't rap about, you know, tying my shoes and stuff like that. It's like, I don't, I very seldom do I do, I, you know, I'm going to smoke weed now and that's what my activity is. It's like, I do what I do, but I do it and I smoke. I medicate like, off that. Like you know what I mean? It's like, it's like I still like, you know, work on music, do the laundry. You know, it's not like, it's, I never set, it's the only time I ever set out to go to smoke weed would be when I was a kid and could smoke it at home. Yeah. So it'd be like, I'm going to smoke weed, so I'd have to end up at some fucking house playing video games and shit just because you wanted to smoke weed. Because now it's like, just there's not much thought in it. Do you think that marijuana has influenced your music at all? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Even though you don't. Have Definitely to. in the beginning. Well, also the music sure that, that like Cypress Hill and people like that. Yeah, that, Cypress Hill is true. They changed our lives. You know what I mean? Really? And so of course, and they made it like, oh yeah, we, 
is, is a viable alternative to all this other stuff, like violence and all this stupid yeah. shit. So, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, of course, it's influenced hip hop greatly, so it's influenced us greatly. That's you know, amazing. For sure, yeah. um, it's influenced the world greatly. Yeah. And even so, before hip hop, it, like jazz was hugely influenced. Oh, by also marijuana. heroin, but yeah, a lot of marijuana. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, it, it just puts you in that state where, you know, as an artist, if you get too much into it, sometimes I find you can get in a slump, but it kind of uh, it enables you to kind of like visit a little bit different uh, frequencies, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's like opens your creative yeah. ability. But if you do it too much, then it kind of gets into that kind of plateau situation. So you I think it depends to... on the person. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I find when I don't smoke, I'm probably just as lazy. I'm more lazy, actually, than when I do smoke. Like, I'll be like... I'm just gonna fucking watch a movie or something. And then I'll smoke it. I'll be like, yeah, I'll we'll get a music going in my head, and then I'll be like, no, I'm gonna work on tunes right now. Like, that's awesome. Well, there's definitely medicinal value in marijuana. Yeah, when I was a kid, straight up, when I was a kid, like they said, I had ADD. Yeah, me and too. And I, I took like Ritalin a couple times, and I was just like, I didn't like it because it just kind of like it changes who you are. It just sucked my personality down. And then you know when I smoked weed, and I was like, I didn't get all like, <laughs> you know, like all goofy and shit. I got like. Focus. Yeah. Into the zone. So, and I, I, you know, I still smoke and I focus on work on music. Um, and I'll stuff. say this as, as a side note. Um, for me, uh, you know, I've smoked weed since I was, I don't know, 14 years old or whatever. Yeah. I'm 32 now. Um, I found that as a parent, I have a four-year-old son, and there was a time, probably about a year ago, where me and him had a bit of conflict sometimes because I would like we vibe off each other. He's a strong boy, you know. And I would smoke a joint during the middle of the day, and I would just be fine. I would come down to his level, everything would be cool. Yeah. I'm excited about what he's excited about. I'm not always trying to do something else. I'm paying attention to him. It made a huge difference. doesn't mean that you have to be dependent on this for parenting. What I'm saying is it made me realize that it's not the weed. It's getting down to the level of relaxing it's, and yeah. seeing. It's very hard to bring yeah. yourself yeah. down. Calming down, it's down because as an adult, you're vibrating at this yes. constant different speed. You know what I mean? And... Uh, when you, have a, when you have a child, any child, not even your own. If it's any looking child. at you, the child is the now. It's always like, yeah. now what? Now what? Now yeah. what? And if you're not in the moment, because we put you into the moment, if you're not in the moment, you're always like, ah, fuck, I'm doing this. Leave me and it's so out. hard to bring yourself down to a child's level also, because when you're a kid... I think it's easier for women than for men. For, for women, yeah, but also when you're a child, your number one priority is, I'm going to go play with my friends. Yeah, I yeah. can't wait until recess tomorrow. For, sure. for us, it's, I, what bill do I have to pay next? What time do I have to But it's do also, this? what, what, what drugs are we going to do this weekend? Are we going to get drunk? And I need to have a cigarette. It's the same. True. It's just more destructive. <laughs> <laughs> Much more destructive. I honestly sit back and wish that I could go back to the easy days of a child. But you know what? You can have that right now. I know. It's I'm true. here, actually. You're doing it. You're doing what you love. You're doing something We're you doing love. something we love. Like, it's yeah. amazing. You can't any better, right? We're doing the same thing. That's why it gives you personal power when you do things that you love. And having a voice. And yeah. having a voice. And giving and other people a voice. Living our yeah. dream. Which I appreciate. Thank you. Living our dream. We appreciate you being here. We do, though. I think I'm living Alright, well, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here, guys. No, no, no worries. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. I would die if they saw that. I know. And we're back. Um. <laughs> and we're black. Yes. We're back. <laughs> I was going to say, we're I love like... <laughs> Don't do that to me okay, anymore. Anyway. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> yeah, there's um, problems with the internet connection. And if any of you are on Wi-Fi, shut it off. Yeah. <laughs> Get off. Um, so that was Sweatshop Union, and uh, they were pretty fun. Um, so last week was 420, as everyone knows. Um, our gallery was frigging insane. Um, do we have a number? How many people do we have a number? Uh, we think it was about 20,000. 20,000? Yeah, 15 to 20,000, but we like to say that the number's as high as possible. Yeah, about 20,000 people. Just you like couldn't we walk. As high as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have fun at 420? I worked really hard on yeah, 420. Yeah, it was a long day. It was a long... The thing about 420 is everybody's passing you joints at all point in time. So if you're trying to actually work and be productive, it actually it gets in the way sometimes because you just have joints everywhere you look. I don't know if everyone appreciates how much work actually goes into that day. It is a crazy amount of work for the people behind 420. Early in morning. Vancouver. Yeah, we started that morning at 7.30. Well, earlier than that. Earlier yeah. than 7.30. And all the work that went into it days previous. So it was a really good day, though. Everyone seemed like they had fun. No problems. I didn't find there was a really heavy police presence, though. There were there were police at all major corners of it going on. I but felt there like were there was none more the at Cannabis Day last year. I don't really remember Cannabis Day. I think I was really high. 
I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely a little bit of a police presence, though. Like, yeah, just not as much. I was expecting more. In my yeah, head. they're more about uh, public safety now than actually enforcing anything because there's such a large crowd of people. Yeah. Say, for instance, the Stanley Cup riots. Large oh. crowd of people. Look what happens, Crazy. right? So oh. the v oh hi, <laughs> this is Figaro, my baby. Do you want to talk? He's say saying hello. Say something. Hi, Figaro. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> um, sorry, he's very distracting because he's so cute. We do have um, footage from that day. We're going to show you guys. So Yay. here it is. Yeah, we only have the, aerial footage. the aerial footage is great because that gives you the idea of how large it really is. This is going to oh, show you big. how 420 Vancouver represents. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. It was a really cool day. It was actually a really nice day, which was better than everyone standing around in the rain and the mud, freezing their asses and off. And so. it rained for a few days before. Like, I know. It was still muddy. So nervous. Yeah, but then I woke up that morning. And when you wake up in Vancouver after living, if you think about the Twilight movies, I don't know how many of you have watched them. These people live under a haze of clouds all the time. That's what we do. So when it's actually sunny and you wake up in the morning, we don't really have those night pull-down blinds because it's not <laughs> sunny. So if it, it is, bursting yeah, in your windows. you wake up in the morning, the sun is bursting, you literally feel like you're going to... I love Vancouver when it's sunny. That's all anyone will talk about. And if everybody has the biggest <laughs> smile on their face, it's like the best thing that's ever like happened. People won't shut up about the weather. Oh, yeah. They that's could have they lost thousands about. of dollars that day in stocks, and they're still like... It, well, it's sunny. It's sunny the first time this whole year how's it going <laughs> my day's great so next we have jordan and i and jeremiah and jody and karina gonzalez the beautiful designer of philosophy pink yeah. is uh we're all going to toronto for the global marijuana march along with dana larson i'm i'm sure he's bringing a little bit of that the other posse as confirmed well jacob yeah uh, not confirmed i don't know for sure but there's gonna be a lot of us there and this year, the march is really different from last year because the mayor down there, I believe his name is a Mr. Ford. Rob Ford, not a nice guy. Did not attend the Gay Pride Parade last year, which all Toronto mayors yeah, have actually attended that? Gay Pride. He didn't give them a permit for the first year. In a few years, we've gotten permits, which allows booth vendors and for everybody to be able to sell things and do their thing and make money. And now there's no permit. So we don't even really know what's going to go on. So Jordan, you're actually going to experience your, is this your yeah, first this marijuana? Yeah, this is my first one. You're going to experience your first marijuana march is actually going to be kind of historic. Yeah, and it's a big one. So, But I also kind of feel sad a little bit because you don't know how it was before. Uh, maybe it's better that it was way. Like a, it was like an awesome 420 minus the weed selling. Instead of the weed, the open farmer's market, there was like an open pipe market. Or okay food vendors but a lot of a lot of stores and stuff would put their pipes and so where do where are we marching queen's park queen's park we start in queen's park um i'm not sure if an official route has been mapped yet but normally we go queen's park to dundas down young street a little bit pretty much keep it in the main downtown area march past um the eaton center is the big mall yep. on young street yep like just in that particular area cool yeah it's uh it's and how many people are we expecting I don't know. Last year was huge. Jeremy, do you ha do you remember an official count for last year? No, but it was massive. It's massive. It's I w is it fair to say upwards of fifty thousand? Well, think about it though. Queens Park is massive compared to yeah. what the art gallery is. I'm not really sure. 
Okay, I would like to get, I'm going to look for an aerial shot of the marijuana march last year. Maybe not 50,000. I think, like, at least double 420, though, to be fair. I know that. There, there's no Toronto Feed and Festival. It's only the marijuana march. But you also have to remember the Toronto, Torontonians all know about the TFF, and not a lot of them, like, most of them might not know that we didn't get a permit and whatever. So I'm willing to bet you that there's going to be a very large crowd that still shows up at Queen's mm. Park. I'm actually quite excited to see what goes down. Yeah, so um, next week's show, I don't think we'll have anything on Thursday. Not Thursday. Because we'll be traveling. I'll be in the air. Hi. Me? Never. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll be on next week live from Vapor Central yeah. on Friday at 4 p.m. 3 p.m. Oh, th- oh yeah, 3 p.m. Jeremiah's yeah. CCNN runs at 4, so we will be 3 p.m. Pacific. 6. 6 p.m. Toronto time, which is that central? Yes, so. Eastern. Eastern. Eastern Standard. Right. I, I caught on to that. I'm a little embarrassed. I didn't know. But <laughs> um, anyways, it's going to be great fun. We're going to have yeah. everybody there from Cannabis Culture. All of our shows. Is McMahon going? I don't think McMahon's going, is he? I don't know. Okay. Well, we're going to have all the CC people in the house. Jeremiah Vandermeer, Jody Emery, Dana Larson, Jordan and I. Yeah. So we're going to have a great lineup of shows on Friday. Yeah, I think uh, that'll be good. And then the next day is the, the big day. Big day, yeah. Big day. It'll Which, be fun. Um, if it's, you guys have a hotel room there, I'm sure all the Vancouverites are coming. Maybe we can get a live stream going, possibly, to see what's going up. Or at least film something and then be able to upload it pretty quickly so that you guys can see how it's going down there. And that's Matt from Vapor Central? That's right. All right. Uh, it, does he have a show today? Uh, he does a show on Tuesdays. Oh, he switched. Yeah. Okay. 4.30 to... Oh, no, he does have a show, so after, yeah, he's got a grow show. The grow show. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to yeah. just... I'm sure they're doing that today. We should try to find that out in the chat, maybe. Yeah, maybe confirm with yeah. him. We also um, had um, Dana Larson and Greg Williams' birthday party here. Yeah, last week. It was, last week was a big week. Oh, and this I feel, week's a big week. I feel like it was so long ago already yeah. last week. Well, I'll have you know, I'm sure you're starting to become more and more aware, but the spring slash summertime is the summer of marijuana fun. All the festivals are going on, everything exciting, minus the Cannabis Cup, which is in November, yeah. which hopefully paparazzi will be able to do a live show from there next year. Not, not accepting any promises or anything about whatever. But, um, yeah, we're going to have a full eventful summer. We have Cannabis Day coming up, which is yeah, another huge day in be, Vancouver. It's going to come quicker than July ever. 1st. I can't even believe it's May next week. Yeah. Eh. Has the, I've, too fast. Hi, everybody in chat. Just wondering, has the year flown by for you guys, too? What's everyone smoking? That's what I want to know. Yeah, what's chat. everyone smoking? Let's see what's up. Yesterday, we, I was actually uh, in the background of Greg's show. Oh. And they asked what everybody's smoking. And there are crazy strains that, like, none of us have ever heard of. Yeah, well, there's, like, millions. I, I know. <laughs> but normally we're like, oh, we're from cannabis culture. We know. Yeah. We know what's up. But then people start naming stuff, and it's like, no, we don't know what's up. So, yeah, we will be in Toronto next week, so you guys can um, come see us there. Tune or you there. can... Um, Watch the show. I believe Vapor Central's making an event out of it. Yeah, I think they have tickets for sale, actually. Oh. Bye, Doobie. And I'll be right back. Vapor Central's checking if Matt has his show. Definitely tonight at 9 p.m. Third Class Thursdays from Vapor Central. Okay. Third cool. Class Thursdays. Platinum Kush. Mm. Afghani Bull Rider. I've heard nothing but good things about that one. And King's awesome. Kush, too. Possum. Mm. Yummy. Possum. Possum. Where are you where are you guys located? <laughs> what? Oy. Where are all these people from? Can we get some can we yeah, get some where are you guys? locations? <laughs> Philly homegrown in West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. Brittany just finished watching all of the seasons of Fresh out, Prince. Chilling out, Max, and all cool. <laughs> <laughs> when a couple of guys. Denver. Washington. Hello. Shot town. Speaking of LA, is that clip ready to go? <laughs> Does anybody have a lighter for Brittany? Brittany's here lighterless. Any second now. Anyone? Oh, 
We have a lighter from a Vapor Lounge. Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Welcome to the Vapor Lounge. Much appreciated. You're on Pot TV. You're on Pot TV. <laughs> you want to come say hi? <laughs> come on. Come poke your head in. This is Michelle. She lent me a lighter. She's going to... Yeah. Oh, so congratulations. Can. Michelle just got her license yesterday. Come on in just a little bit so they can actually see it. Wave. Hi, Michelle. Thanks, congratulations Michelle. on getting your license. <laughs> Yay. That's awesome. Are you going to go to dispensary? I was there already yesterday. Good girl. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and how did that feel? It felt nice. It felt like legally. I I'm not going to get in trouble. No. I don't yeah. have to worry about I anything. Felt five grams and, or 28 grams when I did. Yeah. <laughs> I feel, feel legal about it. Good. That's congratulations. That's so awesome. How hard? Har how hard was it for you to get your license? Uh, it took about a year. A year. Yeah. I was in a back car accident, and then my doctor just recommended it. Wow, you have a lucky oh, girl. Was, lucky girl yeah. to have a doctor like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, that was smart. Good, good on you, girl. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. Enjoy your Thank time. You. Okay. So <sighs> we will. So we have a uh, clip. For you, it's actually quite large. I think that's why it's ten yeah, minutes. Yeah, ten minutes. But normally we have I pretty know. lengthy clips. Like it's a live stream issue. I actually, I was. I'll let you guys know for any of you who are looking forward to guess that strain. I was bugging Dana Larson to uh, come and do a live show. Actually, he's right there. I'm gonna go bug him again. Okay. Uh, give me one second. And Matt's show is coming on after yours. Okay. okay. The grow show today. Okay, you when we're done. <laughs> Oh, so we have Matt Murnau's show, The Grow Show, after Paparazzi, and then we have The Comedy Show, and then we had Third Class Thursdays? Oh, that, that is The Comedy Show. Oh, that yeah. is The Comedy Show. Action Pack Night at Vapor Central. Ooh. I can't wait to go there. I've actually never been to Vapor Central, so I'm uh, looking forward to, to checking it out, filming. We have the concert. Let's roll it. No data. I'm sorry. No, Dana? So now we have the Alcoholics show coming up. Let's get fucked up. Let's get fucked up. <laughs>
Beautiful Jody Emery with us coming to say hi. Hi, and everybody. Welcome to Pot Terrazzi. Well, you know where you are. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm so pleased with this show, and it's great to be here today. Just to pop in and say hi. I don't know if you had questions planned or anything, but. No, nope. no. Nope. How are you doing with the whole Mark situation and everything? True. Good question. <laughs> Honestly, the, uh, Mark and I are both in really good spirits considering the situation. I mean, there, I know that there are so many other women out there who don't have this. They don't have friends. They don't have supporters the way Mark and I do. So I'm grateful every single day for all the positive parts of our lives. I'm grateful he's in a nice, sunny, warm place instead of where it might be miserable. Um, it is prison. It's medium security prison in the United States. It's not an easy thing to go through, but considering he's doing pretty well. So, with the help of all my great employees keeping business going, so Mark and I continue to eat and do our activism and survive, uh, and all the support of everyone out there, things are going pretty well. So, awesome. uh, considering that's the update. And I just did my weekly show, it'll be up tonight. I do it on Thursdays, it's filmed. I don't do a live show, but every week there's a Jody show put out on Thursdays usually at youtube.com slash pot TV network and we have a new pot TV website coming soon too so yeah. we'll be able to see more of all the great stuff together so as well as a new cannabis culture website yeah right? new cannabis culture website too it's uh, super exciting in the works I, we've been saying it for years now but this time it's for real yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear mind you the f like downstairs yeah. has progressed there are museums yeah. now open today yeah, yeah, grand opening awesome. at 7 p.m. two floors of Community center, I like to call it. This, <laughs> what is, now, community this is now a hub. Because yeah. when the second floor, when you had to skip that floor going up the staircase, you always wondered, I wonder what was in there. A whole museum and all sorts of amazing stuff. What's, what's Mark saying about he's second thrilled. floor? Oh, he's so happy. We've been trying to get this done for three years, and now... Mark Emery's Cannabis Culture Headquarters. That's the name of our store, but it's also what I consider the name of this building, minus the part we don't own the Amsterdam, but they do their thing and it's all good. But we have a whole lot here related to the culture, the music, the arts, the history, the community, the everything you need but the weed retail part. You know, we got Pot TV, Cannabis Culture Magazine, all sorts of stuff coming out of here with lots of friends and we network with as many others as we can. So it's going well and I'm so glad to have these girls on our team doing a live show. It's uh, probably the hottest show all week, <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> and for any of you guys who are out there and can't come to the Mark Emery Cannabis Culture's headquarters, you can go to cannabisculture.com backslash store and yep. get all your needs shipped to directly to your house. You don't yeah. even have to do anything. Free shipping in North America too. I always forget to say that. I should say that more often, Free but shipping. anyway. So anybody in Canada <laughs> and the U.S. That's yes, you. that's Free. right. Yep, so check it out and uh, and enjoy the rest of the show. I won't Thanks, hog Jody. any more time. But Thanks, yay. Jody. Yay. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye, Jody. So that's our show. <clears throat> and that being said, we're done for the day. So we will see you next week. 
at 3 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern in Toronto at Vapor Central. Yes, and don't forget to watch Matt Murnau's show after our show. Immediately, right after. Are you ready, Matt? Because we're waiting. Go, Matt. You're on. <laughs> and Thanks have a good night, in, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.